still here. Not a good sign, folks. I don't know what to say. Interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricketude Busting Episode BTW RLM 405. Hope springs eternal, folks. Cricketude Busting. I can only hope and hope and hope. And it's, the evidence is not too good, but we keep plugging away. There's a couple of you out there doing what you can. I mean, not just thinking about it, but doing stuff. When you find out the battle's a little bit different, and you find out that just saying resist isn't resisting, and you find out how organized it all, all is against us, and we the people really didn't don't have a clue what was how it was moved on from what we were supposed to do. So I was trying to talk to last week. I just wonder, looking around this last week, is your mind rabid with mad cow mask-induced fraud 19 fever? It's pretty fascinating what people are doing. I don't understand this. I really don't understand this. I'm, it's a scary place. Without being sensational, about being fearful. I don't know where we all went, but we're not. We're not. We're not here. So, just moving on and trying to help people that decide they want to move forward and doing what I can to make that path clearer and more direct so that everybody moves who wants to, steps up, wants to move forward quickly and to do a better, have a better position to take than just standing there with your mouth agape. And if your excuse isn't that you're mad cow mad, uh, mask induced fraud 19 fever, What's your excuse for putting up with all this nonsense? I can't believe that nobody can find any real thing to do to stop any of this. Make a record at least. And all this inaction means life, liberty, and happiness, starvation, and famine. You euphemistically called austerity. We've heard it all, folks. It's here. They're doing it. The republic has not been kept. If it hasn't been any needed to be any clearer, last week's broadcast explains what you saw the week before. They, they intend medical holomador on your whole way of life. I don't care where you live. This is a global thing. That can't be other than a plan. Not the one that everybody was hoping for, the plan. Trust the plan. Are we still doing that, folks? Huh. In la- last week, I was pretty interesting. i just interested to see how do people not respond. Apparently not many. Maybe one. We're interested in the broadcast last week, what I titled Republic If You Can Keep It, and the subtext was The Woman. No one was interested one way or the other, it seems. Are people stunned at the horror they're seeing? I'm I'm thinking we're in a lot more trouble than I first, second, and thirdly thought, folks. I keep thinking about this, and it just is not making sense to me. What plan? Is anyone still trusting the plan? And if you're not doing that, what plan are you following? Because the plan that we're all supposed to trust in, supposedly, was one of a pseudo-savior that could never, ever fix what's broken. And folks, I don't, really, I don't care what your beliefs or proclivities are. There's going to be no excuse. And the they are playing for keeps. But it won't be to the Republic. And a lot of you may roll your eyes, oh, the Republic, what's that? I, I'm telling you, when you stop any prejudicial thoughts in your mind, and you understand, even for as problematic as the Republic was created in the Constitution, as I've explained, I've explained quite a few infirmities in it. There's a couple things that pass through till today that you can except for the corruption, you can rely on it's there. And when I say except for the corruption, it doesn't give the corruption the power. It just means that there's going to be someone there to obstruct you. And that's what I call the battlefield, and it's something you have to look into the future about. And partly what I do when I'm helping people that come to move forward on their problem, on what they think, they that wrong they want to fix relative to the COVID, and where it's going, is to show, find paths relative to you, what rights you can claim, the harms that you have, the irreparable harms, because I always place it into the into the equity context. And it, there's a choices that you need to make and you can make. 
and those choices have a lot of this, this decision to be making uh, to be decided about how you proceed. And I started you all on understanding what the first and what I think is the most the most easiest one to do because it touches every one of you and it's going to get worse. And you, I'm saying this again, you will please figure out how to make your habeas corpus petition and have a couple copies and hand sign copies to others so they can go in yours help you and when you're not because the government will say you needed to sign it which is a lie but you're not in the power position at that point are you so just have your extra paperwork take wise counsel here if you think this is not going to get worse it was just it's all just weekly news and it's not just it's getting fearful worse oh it's spectacularism this is physical real stuff coming into play and accelerated way accelerated here even faster even more the, the, the COVID-19 thing all year was a drug out compared to what they're now amplifying and moving on. As we come to the broadcast, I see, and, and, and sound minds won't have this link, but you can see it yourself. When conspiracy theories come true, Sunday Times under fire for branding COVID vax passports as, quote, freedom certificates, close quote. Now, that on its surface could mean, if you believe freedom means free, could be an oxymoron. However, when you understand what freedom is a range of motion within a constraint of, a frame of constraint, you realize that's your liberty ticket. And so it's coming. You're going to get what's actually supposed to be called an immunity passport. That's another fraud. Characterization of the truth, in, in one respect, and what most people think freedom is, notwithstanding the oxymoron of that, that part, is what I've been telling you, you're going to have to have a something to address the, the things you're seeing in the world where the cops come and beat you up because no one has a better word in their mouth. Like when you get confronted to ask for the warrant, from a court, first of all, and if you've done the simple thing as sending your letter out, and you have the answer back that there is no answer from the officials, and you, you can show that they didn't fulfill their duty, you have that, together with your habeas paper, and you say, here, take me to the magistrate. You don't have probable cause, and you don't have a court warrant. You're apparently going to do me harm. Take me to the magistrate, and then you be ready when you get there to do your habeas, which is that the burden is on the guy trying to hold you, Restraining your liberty over a fraud to have to answer to that. And I'm saying that in the most, in, in, when they start to move people through and maybe start, well, they're, they're doing it all over the world. I haven't seen too much really in the United States quite yet. I've heard a couple things. But when it starts to hit more e equally, you're going to need to know what I've been telling you, at least to put up some sort of a, a statement against what, what they're doing. Otherwise, there is not going to be stopping that. You will be imposed as a society with immunity passports, even though that term is a fraud. Because this immunity ties to these vaccines that are tied, that they promote do not cause immunity at all. In fact, they cause the thing that they're supposed to be uh, supposedly treating. Okay, so what I've been telling you behind the woodshed are the facts that you're going to need to put down to lay out bullet points. You don't have to go how, tell everybody how much you know. You just challenge that these other things that we've been talking through months and months, the short list of the most relevant to what you're going to be doing, is the fact of the fraud. You assert the fraud. The government will not want to hear about that. That's why you got to keep focusing on it. And you can't weaken yourself by saying, oh, they denied it. If you can even say, I object, you didn't answer the fraud, and continue down there and continue protesting yourself, you're not going gonna, gonna to be in a different position. I can just tell you, in dealing with cops over the years, you're in a different mental condition with them. That you are coming up with an objective basis that's got some, some teeth behind it, and they know they're liable to that, or they're wrong. They may have counter beliefs. That's why you take it into a third party. Because you also should know your law well enough that says, Unless you're, they have an articulable basis of a crime you're committing, then they don't have a right anyway, no matter what they're doing. And if they do have, they're supposed to, if you look carefully at the statutes. And this has been universal, and if I'm wrong, let me know. So I can tell people about not your state, 
that they have to, when they're going to do an arrest, they're supposed to take you to a magistrate. Not what they've been allowed and done to do, and no one argues. And this is the point about the, the criminality. It goes on and on and on, gets worse and worse, and everybody thinks that's, that's, we've been living under new normals and didn't even realize it. Because the normals we've been living under that are quite violative of us are not new. And they're also not actually the foreign imposed ones, which are actually there as well. But here we have Sunday Times facing social backlash. Why? When they're telling the truth. And this is the other thing. Your speech is going to, is going to be tailored, and this is in the news too. We'll bring all these points up as we start moving up. They 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 called them freedom certificates. The, the the Times did, and then they get the backlash. An article published in the UK newspaper on Sunday makes the case for immunity passports, which would allow vaccine recipients to be exempt from lockdown restrictions. In other words, you're all considered sick and under the quarantine now, and that. In fact, there was a hearing in the Tennessee case. That was actually the special case relative to open hearings and getting expedited treatment considered an emergency when you're locked in to an imposition that they have put you underneath the quarantine. And they're telling you right here, this is the truth of it, if you don't have your papers, the immunity that's a fraud, on a fraud, you're in lockdown. You're in the open-air prison in your house, as I've told you since way back last year. Here's the proof right in the news. The notice is right here in the news for you to use. This is what, I don't care what the government is saying, it's it's not mandatory. It is at the point they start instituting these paperwork that you're supposed to carry. Cards, whatever they are, that gives special privilege to a, a class of people when that is not the law. And so this is going to be imperative how we understand What's in the black and white, as I've been telling you, and what the remedies are sitting there, whether or not you see any reflection of their existence coming back and protecting anything, you need to be asserting them for you. And I, I guess I'll go on and, uh, just to say something. I'm kind of backing up and backing up on everything, uh, trying to find positions that people can fulfill. I was pretty much d dismayed and just left without a help for you when I couldn't get a bunch of people. I got a few of you, and you did, and I'm thankful because now you got the start of the record, your administrative record. It'll help tremendously. Whether or not you ever have to use it, it's there. But you write your one one letter, one demand for evidence, and it takes one stamp, and you, you get it done or you get the answer back. The answer will be that there's nothing. And that starts in one administrative record, so they can't get that quarantine order. So there, you have evidence in your hand that there is no order from a court. There can be none because you're still in administrative review. That I'm trying to find easier and easier ways to get you to do something for yourself in the future as we move in here. And I'm hoping I'm hoping something derails this and it doesn't go there, but I'm not seeing it. So I started with the easiest thing. A lot of you jumped in and want to do a little bit harder thing in the courts to stop it, which is great. I can show you the, the pathways for that. But I'm getting back to the point where people can't even do those. They're hard to do if you if you start understanding the totality. I focused, focused you all on the habeas because each one of you will likely need one to have one. And then I find out most of you can't, can't just do what I'm asking. And it's not me. The statutes say that. And I told you last week, those statutes are, do, are the way they are because other people before you failed. And injustice happened. And the legislature said, well, if we're going to make this work for people, we got to lay it out for them. People are not knowledgeable in the law. And the habeas has that limitation. You have to go and get that list of facts that you need. The studies I'm having you done is only one or two of a list of five to ten things a state would, would need. They need that. The court needs it because you have to make, you have to assert certain facts in order for the court to be able to help you if it's going to. And we see some of that out there. So I'm not totally throwing that baby out with that bathwater that obscures the fact through the corruption we also see. So I'm backing up one more step for you all, but I'm really not so sure because if you can't send a simple letter to man the evidence that's, that's holding you down with the lockdown, I don't know how to get you to do the habeas. But even so, for those of you still having trouble, and because it's coming down at really the time I want to make sure people understand even the most basic one will work, even if you don't aren't completely consistent with any particular state. If I remember correctly, and I should have checked before, but it, the idea came to me too late before the broadcast. I did a broadcast about the habeas corpus. In fact, you may want to search that behind the woodshed at habeas corpus. 
a hashtag or whatever, however you do it, get there, to get the habeas corpus broadcasts that have it in the, in the hashtag where I spoke about the Texas law. And my memory is saying to me, if I remember it right, it was in a kind of an interesting typewritten writing text on from the Texas legis, uh, from the Texas state's website. But right there, if you needed, if you don't have a other, if you can't go find your statutes for some reason in your state, I would ask you if you have nothing else you can do, go to the Texas link or find it on the internet. Find the list of things that the Texas state requires for habeas, and I think that will get you most of the way, if not all the way, to what you need in a short list, that you would take that and copy and paste it into your document for a writ of habeas corpus, for the writ of habeas corpus. And you would then fill in the blanks. And if you look at that as I explained from the Texas one, for Texas, now I'm saying now expand that, because if you can't do anything else, then you got to have something. That seemed to be straightforward. I've already talked about it. It's already there. It's black and white. You stick it in your document. And most of what they ask you is just to be left alone and just what you needed to say. You don't even have to add to it. Three or four of them, you have to add your particulars. And so if you have nothing else you can do, at least put together, take the time. In all this supposed time, we, we've got to do nothing else. Create your document that says habeas. I don't care if you put it in a letter form right now. This is getting to a very serious point, and I want you to be prepared. I'd like to have you do that as an exercise for yourself. Do that. Go to Texas, find their list for the habeas, copy and paste it in, fill in your facts where it says if it, if it just makes a generic comment that you do, you're in this condition, then just leave that. That's what you can leave. Just You just needed to say it on a piece of paper so the court understands that's one of the facts it needs in order to do help, to help you in this case. At least go to that, put it in a piece of paper, have it filled out. You don't need to go on and on. You just lay out the fraud, just as I've told you how to do that from the statute that they failed to do. You have to find that. There's no other way around it because that's what they're using. You even hit the emergency side for the governor that there's no, what I have I said, there's no, we'll use the, the broader term, there's no non-fraudulent demonstrable, demonstrable exigency. You put that in because that's what they need in this police power side. You have that ready to go. You just stick that, sign it, have copies, give it to some people, and have, you put a couple in your one in your rig. You put one in your pocket. But when this, well, it's getting pretty close. I don't know who and where, but so that you at least and you bring your letter that you have no response to, and the first one that won't back off and wants to make some arrest. And they got a color of an authority on them. You hand that to them and say, "We got to go to the magistrate. You're the one that's unwarrant restraining my liberty without warrant. I want you to talk to the judge about how you're doing this because you have no warrant. You can't get a warrant, and you're dealing in fraud. Can you have that word in your mouth, folks? And I don't mean, oh yeah, yeah, I got it. I mean, you have to sit down and make this up for yourself because the future is now. What we've been talking about is here." They don't mean to let you up. You are in lockdown. They're talking about freedom certificates, of all things. They're talking fraud. They're talking immunity passports. There's no such thing. I don't care what disease you look at. That's immortality. Now, one of you that... Okay, maybe there's some Dracula out there. Okay, get in touch with me. I would like to know you're there, at least. I see enough blood suckers going on now with all these blood tests going on, so I know they're in the medical profession. But where immunity certificate on its face is, is a fraud. And it has to be because it's all of this springs from fraud. And I, and I can't tell you how important it's going to be to hold on to that because in the more I've been studying, in fact, I found some stuff this this last week, I've made, I've suggested to people, I don't know where I got some of this stuff, but so long ago I don't remember where I got it. I tell people to do certain things. It just so happens this last week I found more confirmation in the books of authority. I say they're authority because the governments look at these books. And it says exactly what I've been suggesting needs to be said in these pieces of paper that, that doesn't seem to do anything but causes can cause a ton of trouble for those that want to ramrod the whole condition against you. Because, okay, so today we're looking at now, people who want to tell you what these are, freedom certificates, got slammed. So 
Your speech is go is absolutely curtailed here. You can see even someone who wants to come up and talk about promoting the fact that you're going to be free to roam about the country if you only have your papers is now is also being broken down and beat down because you can't say it that way. You can't let the herd on. You can't let them on to what's coming down. I mean, I'm looking at this and saying they're telling you right there that they are exempt from lockdown restrictions is a presumption that you are in a quarantine state, which there is no jurisdiction in the in the government to have authority to do to you, is your answer. Not that they have no authority. They don't have the jurisdiction to even have the discretion because they didn't comply with that first law that I've been asking you to go find in your state. And so you're right here given notice you're in presumed quarantine. That is an unwarranted restraint on your liberty. Your habeases will work. In fact, they become an emergency position that will work. And in fact, further, I've said before, one of the states specifically explains in their rules that habeas is used where there's a believed unwarranted, where someone who is wrongfully, believes they're wrongfully collected up underneath the quarantine power, they have that power through the habeas. I'm going to go on and on but back how this is all working and how it's been supported. Like the in, Portu in Portugal, the three German uh, tourists using it to get out of the courts, uh, uh, get, uh, have the courts get them out. So it's right here, folks, and it's happening. You're looking at passports that are fraudulent on their face just by their name, what they're supposed to even think that they're doing, and they're now con telling you you've, your lockdown is that quarantine. Every one of you has now a cause to have a habeas. In the minimum, I'm not talking about all the other things that people want to think that you can do. Like what? Does anybody even know? Injunctions or the mandamus or the declaration, uh, the, the declaratory judgments or whatever. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. There's writs of prohibition. There's all, all kinds of tools. And they all have their specialty that you have to approach and, they're, and, be, and also then you have the battlefield they walk into, which makes it a little bit more that you have to be a little more creative on how, how some, sometimes how you approach it. Anyway, moving on. Uh, moving into it's not getting better. They're moving more technology in. This story pops up also this morning, uh, which pretty boy just explains more about what's really been going on behind the scenes technologically and where this thing goes they put it into context for us, but if you if you listen behind the woodshed for any length of time, you realize this technology, when you take it away from the purposes, I put an email, I put a Twitter out, you remove the what their purpose is, they're telling here through DARPA, and you use other materials and other electromagnetic technology, and you have what I told you was going to be if the bio the binary or trinary weapon system that they will put into you, or we read today this morning. Battelle led team to mature brain computer interfaces for DARPA's N3 Neurotech Research in Initiative. A Battelle led research group secured funding from the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency to continue developing a brain computer interface concept for non invasive clinical procedures and other military and national security applications. Let me just say, I'm, I hope that, are you terrified yet? No, here's the, here's where it gets even more terrifying, and they're already doing some of this. As I told you, was the mechanism of the, of how they put the pieces together in the multiple part weapon. Battelle said Tuesday, the team will move forward to the second increment of the three phase next generation non-surgical neurotechnology program and mature capability sets for its magnetoelectric nanotransducer based BCI concept. The group will develop the test and external brain writing interface for the brain system to transmit or receive magnetoelectric signals technology, which requires the injection of a localized MENTS in neural tissue to be guided by a magnet to a targeted location in the brain. Let me just go back to how they, they get it non-surgically. Is the injection is localized. Remember, in another material, just to bring it up and go no deeper, you can read this and think about it yourself. 
the aluminum, the nanoaluminum, and the other nanoparticles in re regular vaccinations migrate naturally to certain spots through the nervous system. We're talking now electrical stimulation. They're found to interfere with that already. You're watching the damage of the, the, current, the, the current vaccines right now in some people. That the injection is of not materials that they can guide by magnet, which they could be, because they need to get to you there. What about m materials that migrate naturally to these nerve centers and then are stimulated externally by, my, by electromagnetic stimulation? Not just that they're one frequency, but multiple frequencies, as I explained to you, they could create, as I found way early on in research and development electronics by accident, that if you put multiple signals in with special relationships, they will actually form up fields and shapes, which didn't, which sh says relative to how they can animate particles and where they can place them and forms they can make. But anyway, m moving on. You've heard me talk to this years and years ago, the potential. They're telling you today it goes in through a vaccination, a vac um, an injection. And in this case, they will then direct the particles to where they need to go in the neural connections that they'll make near the brain so they can make this thing work. And I want you to know that this is what they're telling you. This is the technology where it's at so quickly now to do this. That the technology is already understood. We've read it over and over again. They can place these nanoparticles by their nature into places in your body and stimulate them. So they're hacking in your system with these things or can, and they're telling you that just as you heard by Nuitsch. It's you know it's it's a it has it is beginning to unfold the way you've been told behind Nuitsch, as I wrote in a tweet this morning, as I keep bringing out trying to show people it's this is here in the news. I mean, the notice is right here. So this is now interjected on top of what I had before, which was hacking electronic systems and some things I wanted to more like a PSA to y'all. For your your computer systems, as we move on, it's, we're finding people being able to hack our systems by injecting things. Linux mild malware authors use Izuri Golang Cryptor for zero detection, as Linux was a understood to be a lesser attack surface OS operating system. We're now getting out that now that they're coming to look at Linux. They're actually doing some fairly high, sophisticated attacks that you can't even know. And so I want to let you know this is a process of allow you, you still they can, if they can get into your system and they get you to do it by clicking on the wrong files, they can load this into memory. It does an execution in memory. Linux is really cool about that. They can actually that's what live Linux is. You, you, it all executes from memory, not from your hard drive. And they load this into the memory of your, your RAM, and you can't see it. And it does its thing, and then dis it d deletes itself. And so it can set up your system, and you don't even know it's there. I want you to know about this. There's For those of their techs behind this, uh, you that do detect the tech things and are interested, I'll give you a link also that I had to track down. It's a detecting Linux memfd underscore create, parentheses, clo open close, file list. Malware with command line forensics. A uh, gentleman from Sandfly Security explains how you go about to check if your system has been affected by this. It's a little bit lengthy, but it, but it is a step-by-step -step process. Those of you that can, you as we move into this new new world, Internet of Things and the and the hacking of just about everything electronic, you're going to have to be aware, I suppose, of these things, uh, or maybe just stop using them. But anyway, moving on, Linux is uh, not just there. I also ran across on this uh, Bleeping Computer. I've always been appreciative of ble the website Bleeping Computer. Sometimes I don't get to it too much, but th this week I happened to run across it. Windows 10 bug corrupts your hard drive on seeing this icon's files icon. Just by seeing a code that can now be interjected, injected through a zip file, and this comes up to a particular problem for me to give you a link. I didn't give you the link because it was full of zip files that the Windows 10 can be corrupted if this code is defined for an icon, it goes in and destroys your hard drive. Just by clicking on the zip file folder, you don't even have to click on the file. 
So these people are getting very sophisticated on how they can corrupt your system or get into your system, and that's just going to take another level of understanding if we're going to continue down this path. I want people to be aware of this. Microsoft patches Defender antivirus zero-day exploited in the wild. Those of you that have Microsoft Defender, go look and see if you have the latest version because they claim in this zero-day patch, if you have the latest version, it has been patched supposedly. Although, as I looked down very quickly, Grimner puts in Windows 10 comes pre-corrupted. I think we've talked about that, yes, indeed. But uh, so, even so, this is becoming more and more important to watch our electromagnetic systems for injection vulnerabilities. As I can move this through, I hope you all appreciated that connection between what DARPA is doing and what Microsoft allows and Linux. Uh, not allowing, but again, you can only do so much. I mean, there's only, these systems are, are have vulnerabilities and they're going to be, they're going to be one of the things you'll have to consider. And I guess I can say we're trying, I'm trying to show you, you have a reverse hack against the the, the official hacks of the system to rehack it to inter inject your word, inject your program to reprogram how the government's supposed to function through the proper, more proper remedies. And the point is to not stand there with a, your mouth agape when they're coming after you or try to argue with them. You don't want to argue. I keep telling you, there's not an argument. There's a set of facts you lay out. They're either on the right side or the wrong side, and you move with that right in your right there. Because as I said, they're taking away your speech. You're not going to have much to speak. Even in prison, you have a right to have legal material. So understand that th that is the point. If you speak it in the quote legal material way, they can't really shut you down. And so this is how you have to preface your life at this point until we, if we ever can get this th the republic back as as it was, you're presumed innocent instead of presumed guilty, sick, quarantinable, asymptomatic as healthy is is the proof. And they have no jurisdiction. Not that they have no authority. Yeah, they don't have that. But you want to you want to prove they have no jurisdiction. What's jurisdiction? The authority and power to in, hear and determine, just like a court is. Jurisdiction allows the power to hear and determine. If they don't have the power, they don't have, can't do anything. But in particular, they can't hear and determine. And if they don't have all that, they can't. There's no authority to wield after that. But moving on to show you how quickly this is coming on and all the tech and stuff and the injection, the foreign injection of themselves, these third parties into your world in your life on something you just want to go look around the Internet for. You know, that's all they have you doing, and that's all you chose to do instead of write your letters like I'm asking and even set up yourself, your package that you have to carry around now. Your papers ought to be what I'm telling you to say, not your, not your IDs and not what you think your rights are, but your remedies on how you're going to interfere with their presumptions and prerogatives, which are, oh, so powerful. And I can't tell you how much that's coming through in in a couple of court cases that they're, they're, they're trying to rely on unbridled sovereignty that doesn't exist. And it's so easy, if you understand how to address that, it's so easy to defeat. And you show right away they're the emperor with no clothes. They're the little man behind the curtain, if they're a little man at all. And you can blow that down just like all y'all have been doing this in the legal realm for years and years. And we all got beat down. We all have our experiences just like you were doing done before, but better. Now it's focused on something that is not open to opinion. And this is what I've been focusing on all these years. How do we move from what they put us on marbles to defend and then actually kick those marbles off? We get out of the room with the marbles and we say, you don't have the right to put the marbles. You don't have the right to be in the room. In fact, you're actually locked behind that door, not me. And I've told you how to do that over the years. So Mozilla chairwoman calls for investigation to pro-Trump ad spending after a four-year disinformation campaign. Uh, again, Mozilla is your browser. The companies that were supposed to be neutral, hope, uh, freedom, Internet freedom, try to help people, they are now becoming the culprits. I could care less about the Trump and the disinformation. The whole entire condition is a different disinformation campaign. And at some point, you can't know what the direction is coming, whether it's left, right in, in the government or foreign in, intruding in the government. And yet Mozilla and all the, and, and is coming in to call for transparency. I told you that's... They want to look right through the harm they're causing to you in your life and in controlling your speech. Just like they did 
new media comes out and says, oh, we're going to call it freedom certificates, and they get jumped on for it. You can't say that. Notwithstanding the oxymoron, you can't tell people that they're they're being that that's the only way they can move about the country is to have their papers. That might actually fire them up. And I've told you the occupier cannot let the not rile the natives until to the point that the natives start coming back at them. And I say, come if you're going to come back, come back correctly. We we didn't see the correctness in the election electoral college certificate that's that was not the right way that was you should have done, been there but you shouldn't have been there doing that and we uh, we also know maybe not most of you did some did and that's coming out all this nonsense but that was like anticipating you and you're you can't you have to anticipate that they can anticipate you and not go there and do it different in fact i I've, I've heard some people they're doing it better because they have their paperwork as they move they do have to have their papers but their papers are their lawful purpose on the streets, and that passes them through. And so this is coming to tell, it reminds me again to tell you, and uh, again and again, what I've been telling you is, is correct. Whether or not it helps anyone in particular, we'll never know that. It all depends on how you handle that and what you actually have, and what you understand to say, only what you need to say, not more, and how you need how you can persuade people with your organization, the organization, your constitution, your organization on addressing and asserting that you are free and they all have the standard and you understand, bullet point, you understand what those standards are they're violating. And because they're violating, they're running into the, they're running into something called felonies, which are extortion and coercion and violating due process, particularly, even if they have a, 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 a due pro, a probable cause they have to bring you before the magistrate, and if they didn't think that, here's here's your habeas corpus. You bring us now. We want to go to the magistrate. You will speak to the magistrate. Now, you're doing all of that just to try and keep yourself from being beat up, hauled off, injected, whatever the heck it is. You have to, And you have to keep pressing that. You don't get involved in, in, in argument, in, in arguing. Because these people are pre setting up their transparency that is something that you can't get through and get to see, and you will be controlled by it all. And this is all coming down after this election cycle. Just as we have been saying, it's going to continue to ramp up. MSM calls for new definition of free speech. So now it's coming out. MSM is now saying you don't even have a right to def define what speech free speech is apparently it's not so free and i'm not talking about the context that the go the, the supreme court have, may have decided about the fabricated story of being in a in a theater yelling fire I, i'm talking about they're they're wanting to say they want to define what free speech is who are they and yet they're going they're getting covid told us that covid's telling me 99.999% of the population will eventually and will and do agree with the renormalization, the un, the abnormalization of your way of life. And that is because you're not responding to protect yourself. I, I'm hoping beyond hope you do something even quietly for yourself, as I've instructed earlier in this broadcast. Part of the main uh, duty of Off Guardian is to troll through the masses of media output and try to pick up patterns. Sometimes the patterns are subtle and a gentle urging behind the paragraph. Sometimes they're more like sledgehammers to the face. This week has been a face hammer week. In fact, it's been a face hammer year from flatten to curve to new normal to the great reset. It's not been hard to spot the messaging going on in such on since the start of the pandemic, in quotes, and that the distinct lack of disguise has carried over into other topics, too. We pointed out, this author, a few days ago, the sudden overuse of the phrase domestic terrorism, preparing us for what is almost certainly going to be a tr truly horrendous piece of new legislation once Biden is in office. Now, they're just finding it last week that the phrase domestic terrorism is prevalent. I told you back in uh, when I started broadcasting, and that was all based on what happened in 9-11, and then Operation Hindsight 2020, I told you they were going to ramp that one up, and here we are. It's, 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 un, it's beginning to unfold the way you've been told behind the woodshed. Uh, well, the, the author goes on, the buzz phrase doing the round is doing the wrong in the wake of Donald Trump being banned from the Internet. 
the new definition of free speech and variations on the theme is now becoming a meme, I'll say. And people will buy it, and they, the point is that the, there's not a limit to what people like the CEO of Mozilla, which who would have thought that, have an opinion to actually look at who makes your browsers, who has all the power about how you go, how you go about the Internet as well, to work with other companies that are in censorship that we can see were part and parcel to, well, the imposition of, upon of free speech, such that it could be, to now work together some more to the point where they are in such a power position and they understand that they'll remain there, that they are going to now define what speech is. Free speech is what they tell you. It's another oxymoron. So this is how you see, you can start seeing, you know them when you see them. They're occupiers in your life and they don't deserve to be around. And yet they have the force and power of persuasion and people are allowing it. What was it? Orwell type stuff here, right? But I want to move on. So this now comes on the heels, which is a story I couldn't get to last week. I wanted to just, I was an overachiever on all the tabs the last three or four weeks so far. But I'm going to get to this back for what this story about. This comes right after the one of the main insults to free speech and journalism and things in the Assange case. Now, Julian Assange, the verdict for his extradition was brought uh, last a week before. And I didn't get to that story, but it, now we, it comes, that story comes in right after that we start seeing even more censorship and now we're, companies are redefining what free speech can be, how you're going to go about saying it. You can't even uh, tell people w what they're actually facing in a freedom certificate to be able to move around. Well, you can't do that because that just tells people that gives them the hint they're, they're actually are locked down and you're not going to be, you're not free anymore. That repu where'd that republic go, keep folks? If you and, and there's not, it's an. What's the question? You didn't keep it. It doesn't really matter. You didn't keep it. It's going where it's going to go until you do keep it. It's still there. It can be kept. It can be kept the way I've been suggesting at a beginning step. You have to have a better a better plan than that the plan, and then those with the great reset. You have to have a better one for you. And I've said the way you defeat it is you rely on your laws because they can't touch law. Law is the third rail to these people. Julian Assange's extradition, how the world reacted, was a story that came out. And we see a report here. WikiLeaks founder and publisher Julian Assange should not be extradited uh, to the United States to face espionage charges on UK. The court ruled Monday. The district court, Vanessa Baritzer, uh, said such a move would be oppressive, taking into account Assange's mental health, saying he was a, at a suicide, risk of suicide. While his supporters welcomed the move, there was still an air of caution, as many expect the United States government to appeal the decision, meaning Assange will continue to be held at Belmarsh Prison in London, a maximum security facility. Understand, this is a guy who has been determined to be a journalist, was involved with some information that was public domain. The court cases are that when it comes into the public domain, it is public domain. It's no longer secret, even though it may hurt people. Uh, there's a whole other story about this, but the problem, this story at this time, was that the problem was people were appear, were worried about a United States government appeal. When I read this story, I said, that's not what I'd be worried about. Here's a note to you in the United States. Not only are your prisons not, we'll use the word humane, and they've breached the whole condition of prisons in this country already in the United States of America. Not only are they inhumane, using the word of the animal system. The United States was not found to be incorrect in that in its charges that it could temper journalism, that it could do what it's done, that it could make the charges. The way the court made this decision was that he's saved, not because he is a journalism, he has free speech. It's because he's mentally incapable of enduring the punishment he would get in a U.S. prison is not the kind of answer we wanted to see. And so while everyone's worried about an appeal, 
when I saw that story, I said, wait, wait a minute, we're missing a big deal. Well, it finally comes out. People, you know, there's, there's smart people in the world, intelligent people in the world. People started to see it pretty quickly. Unlike that first entry in that, in that article, people started to realize what was really going on. That he was acquitted, but he was not acquitted because of the strength of, of journalism, of the strength of journalistic inspection, of research, in journalistic, uh, in secrets, in journalism, in journalistic relationships, in freedom of the speech to speak on things. He was not acquitted of that. And we have, I have a couple links about this. UK judge rejects Assange extradition, but it's no win for freedom of the press. Now, understand, as I've told you about that, that's freedom of the press. They don't, it's like you don't even exist if you're not the press. And so uh, at that point, you start to realize, well, you better have a word in your mouth about you being the press. Right, Vin? Right, Vinny? <laughs> Hope you're doing all right. At any rate, yeah. You better see, look real carefully how this place is wired and find out you better start fitting yourself in places that are afforded the protection, even if they're disregarded by the government. Because what would you expect from a rogue government anyway when you didn't keep the republic in any way, shape, or form? UK judge rejects Assange extradition, but it's no win for freedom of the press. And he's not let out. And so this is the really ominous sign that happens like a week or so before we see even more censorship and more control by private organizations. But this is, I think, about the time we see Trump being kicked off of all platforms because his free speech was declared to be un free uh, to be uh, violent of some sort none of which really was that i could tell and even if it was th there's another standard and they don't aren't the judge they aren't they don't have jurisdiction actually to make that call actually but notwithstanding all that moving through we i said earlier coming in this is going to lock in it's locking down it's getting worse and worse what's coming down and you have to anticipate how this will work you'll be constrained to only certain things you can say and uh, and the things I've been telling you in the law, whether you want to laugh at that or not, are going to be the th the limited things you will be able to say. And so, take please play, take counsel. Ho hopefully, it's wise counsel. Take counsel here, relative to what looks like it's coming in the future, even though you don't quite see it yet. The signs are everywhere about it. Your browser's now in your face if you're doing Mo Mozilla, Fo Firefox. So they're they're right there. If, if even if you didn't use any of the other social services, social services, yeah, social media services, U.S. takes back its assertion that Capitol rioters wanted to capture and assassinate officials was an interesting story relative to that embrace, uh, the 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 so-called riot, the so-called storming of the Capitol. The United States government made charges, and then they had to back off of the statement of fact inside the complaint, criminal complaint. That they were the people, the the, chart, the ones that the, the, the defendants were there to capture and assassinate officials. Shows you the government is not above sensationalism, but when it comes down to having to actually back up what their statements are, all they could essentially get them is what I told you last week, just what they charged initially, which was being in an unauthorized, being in a place that has without authorization, essentially, a trespass of sorts. Which I think still has the argument: whose house is that? The house of the people, or are we are, or is it of the foreign, a foreign government? And then where was the military? Not for Biden's inauguration, no, to, to keep the republic in the houses of the people. Where was that? I heard a, somewhere a little link: the military doesn't work for Pelosi. Really, really? But the government can come in and just lie, and then you get down to the uh, the requirements of it, and they were going to have to substantiate this statement that the rioters were were there to capture and assassinate. They had to make a special strike on their own paper and, uh, and charging instruments. And this is what you can find. If you see this, you realize the government will lie. You can charge this back, if you will. Not a charge back necessarily, but it, some of you will understand that, but... You don't want to kind of do it that way, but that's what you're doing. And there's provisions in the law on doing that. There's provisions in equity on doing that. It has to do with false statement and fraud. You can, you can, you can bring that back. 
and you can this is where I start to get into where you do collateral attacks. They come with a bad charge. You come collaterally to attack them through like an injunction. That you have to be good. You have to know what you're doing on that one. That's a very serious thing to do, but it's there to do. And um, am I just talking? No, I've done two of them, and and both of those matters were went into the void. Okay, it wasn't justice, but they didn't continue to pursue the case. It wasn't on this level of thing where you're into capital and where video. It had an another thing, but it was a government charge where the government's lying. It's lying on so many levels. It's lying on its authority to do what it's doing. It's lying on the facts that it puts in the complaint. It's lying on that it can have a remedy against what you're doing. And you have all that to show. It's just a fraud. And so you collaterally attack that to enjoin that for that reason. A different angle. You have to know what you're doing, though. So this is what we were supposed to know in order to keep that republic that we're all dumbed down. We call it dumbed down about. And that's no excuse, as I've said going into the broadcast, over and over. There's not going to be an excuse for this this thing coming on to us. So the government will lie, but there you see a, a, a that you see they have to retract. And so here we have these authorita telling you what free speech is. They're defining it, and yet they're lying as well. And I hear crickets on all this stuff. I hear nobody making the, well. There are people out there, but not many people at all. Not enough making the noise about doing that. This kind of harkens back, I don't want to get too far off, the, what the Emmett Bundy thing, when the court, what, what the court was doing and the prosecutor was doing and got caught. Finally, the judge didn't want to be wrapped up in that snowball and said, no, 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 you're doing stuff here, prosecutors, you're not supposed to do, and finally called it out. But the, but she, I told you, she allowed it until I told you something else. You have to embarrass them, and she didn't want to. She didn't want to be that embarrassed, and that's part of making a record and being relentless on pulling out, extracting all the errors that they create. And you got to. I know it's a tough thing, but you got to listen close. If you go back and listen to, like I have been listening to uh, files of hearings, the judges and the attorneys are violating the law left and right. And, it, and, and while you're there, it's so much information to have to take in. They blow right by you. I understand all that. But, you can again, nothing is done and settled when you can make a motion to object to those things you found later that were violations. And I mean material violations that interfered with your ability to prosecute or defend yourself or um, assert a remedy. And if you just have those words and you know to put those in and then back it up, the support, the, the reason why, the rationale behind, the authority behind what you're saying, it makes it very much more difficult for anybody to do this stuff. Anyway, here's the government. They're going to come out and say that you attended, uh, we're going to capture and assassinate. They, just, they put that in the paper. They don't have grounds for it. They came back and, and vacated that. They, they moved to strike it. They can't support that outward lie. Same authority, they're going to outwardly lie about whether their authority on what you've done or what you didn't do, that you should have done. That's what you're looking at, is the government does not take the time to be right. It could care less. It just comes out with the most sensational thing it can. It piles on charges and then makes you, the victim of that lie, hope that they see their own failure or most of the time you, don't, you have an attorney that won't. You don't assert back that this is all what it is. Now, on the point of the Trump situation, on the point of the invasion, I just want to put out something. I don't know if I, how much of this I want to underwrite. I just want to bring it out there. There's a few more days left that it's going on. Uh, something has come to my mind about what this thing is. What's still available, if you will? I guess the problem for me is, is, is fraud. Fraud is not being addressed in this country anywhere I look. And so to me, that's now becoming more of a focus. So it, that's my my blinders at this is not a blinder, but it's what I'm noticing. Fraud is not getting is is allowed to continue. And I told you that was in 2008 when they let the fraud of toxic debt become uh, money, currency, fraud, finances. Toxic debt became finance. I said it, the wraps are off. In 2008, the wraps were off. It's the financial world was able to run fraud over everybody, and that touches everyone. Would seep out and taint everything. Well, here we are. Here's the day when they can talk fraudulently and not get not get uh, uh, be held to account. So that's what I'm looking at. Then the so-called invasion of the riot, the, the storming of the Capitol, whatever that ends up being. But underneath this is this 
thing, this dynamic of the fraud of the elections that so many people are are not not appreciating at all. Although they seem, most everyone seems helpless. And at some point, I can see the way the law has been set up. People are, and uh, there's uh, someone named uh, Michael Lindell who is playing up in the news. He has a little video that was on a network. Uh, I wasn't really thrilled about most of it. I'm saying, get to the point. Get to the point. Where's your evidence? But he brings up a condition of now what he claims to have actual facts of the fraud of the election by by server numbers, where they came from, and all this other. In other words, he has evidence. And par- apparently, he was able to get a few minutes with the president. I don't know how these guys do it. But anyway, they get he talks for a few minutes and shows this evidence. And so that got to me to thinking, coming down to the last week before or so before the inauguration, we haven't seen much of the plan. Uh, we hear lots of stories. I'm not. I'm not buying into any of that. I'll, like I told somebody, uh, quite a few people have been commenting to asking me about what this is and what I think about. It. I said I'll believe it when I see it, and I only say that after I point out really clear anomalies in the fairy tale that's being. I find it as a fairy tale relative to anomalies that are being stated and by whom and what they think that they, they're saying and all this. However, th- this is a little no- mar- demarcation in, that someone is saying on a news r- report. What, what he has found, and I started to think about that, leading, okay, so they've been saying, the attorneys for Trump have been saying they're going to do more. Well, I'm looking at process, I'm looking at remedy. What do you do here when someone, when you believe uh, that someone's been in office? And uh, I'm glad, actually, to see after I did some research, I'm not the only one, that there's other minds out there thinking about this, that... And only recently, though, just like when the mind, when the thought comes to you, you say, well, what what would I do if I was in that position? Again, exercising the remedies that are there in the government to to keep that republic, to keep things honest, notwithstanding the corruption, but just to be there to say, here I here I've got a problem. And the thing that immediately came to my mind, and I'll ask this as a question, then I'll give a quick answer. What do you do when you feel someone's been in office? What's the remedy for when you believe you have evidence that someone's been in office? and is not worthy of the office they are holding. Okay, you got anybody, any minds come, anything comes to mind? Which one? It's a writ. It's a writ, just like all the writ of habeas corpus, the writ of mandamus, it's another common law remedy, which is dealt with through equity. It's called what? It's you don't, aren't warranted in the office, so it's a writ of quo warranto. In other words, the question to the one, the office holder, how do you lawfully hold the office? Was something that came to mind relative to this evidence, now finally saying it's there, apparently presented to the president. Let's just go with, okay, what's the president's options? We hear lots of things going on, but what can he do after he's out becomes a little bit relevant here. If nothing happens until then, again, to exercise our remedies. What can we do? Well, we may not be able to do anything, but he is directly, uh, President Trump is directly affected because if there's fraud involved the, that and he was a sitting officer and it's being he's being deposed through the fraud of an election he has standing now he has to particularly state that and so i ran across a, a case to explain to us this these things i want to show you how this case is interesting because it shows you a bunch of people that came to sue obama and the court found they didn't have that thing, that's, that magical word called standing, and they explain how. And I think that's important to find and read all these different classes that the court created of people, which looked fair enough, made a claim to sue Obama, and each time they made a claim uh, under a, a right they didn't really have that the court explains. And I want people to read for that in this case. You get the link when I get there that... You have to do the analysis on your case to be able to place yourself with the right to sue. This is that standing thing, that thing, that term standing. And there's a there's a way to do that. And and, and this is the first thing they'll attack with you on you anyway. So you're going to have to answer this. And so I w- went to a case called I found a case called Drake versus Obama in 2011. And I it, it, we can go through and it, I guess I can set up the case. The plaintiff's appellants, plaintiff appellants contend that Barack Obama is constitutionally ineligible to be president of the United States. United States District Court Judge David O'Carter dismissed plaintiff's constitutional claims as well as their claims for declaratory and injunctive relief 
for lack of standing. We affirm the dismissal for lack of standing, albeit on somewhat different reasoning than that of the of the of the district court. Now, that's the setup. We go read through this this case. Something else is in this case, and the thing that's in this case that says something else is a a decision on what constituted proper venue. That's where you hold the trial, where you sue. That's another thing as a, a someone you have to have. You you have to sue the one you're suing. Um, you're suing is that's what your uh, where they the court has authority over that one. Now this is on your habeas. As I think about the habeas corpus, you may need to leave the names blank that you have to write in in the moment who you're dealing with. And I think you can put a description even if you don't have a name: John Doe, who, where. Uh, any descriptors, and that should suffice as well in case they want to not give you a name. Okay, so that to now, to this, to Quo War and Tell, you're challenging an, oh, someone. It, these these people, there's quite a few people that tried to challenge this, and the court literally knocks them, they're standing out. The, the, the thing they claim they had the right was not the claim. In particular, was interesting, people that were candidates at the time they filed were no longer candidates, and they lost their ability. They didn't file timely relative to the the thing they were claiming. And the court said, we can't, there's nothing we can do. You, you aren't even in the status anymore that gives you that right to claim. Maybe before, but not now. Now, Trump is not in that condition. Anyway, looking at, the, at this thing, the quo war in tow, challenging someone's office. Uh, and here I thought, well, you got to, Biden has to, cha- has to take the oath of office before he can be ousted from it. And that's the word, ousted. You can oust somebody of their office. Quo warranto. We go right to the section B in this paper. Black's Law Dictionary, 9th uh, edition, 2009, defines quo warranto as the quote, common law writ used to inquire into the authority by which a public office is held or a franchise is claimed. And they cite section 163501 of the District of Columbia Code, and which is important here because you have to go to the black and white to see your pathway. And this case is partly about how people did it incorrectly. And you see in the case, the plaintiffs all sued in California. That's why the Ninth Circuit was, it was appealed to the Ninth Circuit. And uh, and they said they they knew that they were supposed to do, do the suit in the District of Columbia. Understand we're talking district again. It's not a state. And there's certain dictation of what you have to do in order to have to do a proper suit, you have to follow those rules. Why well, I'm trying to show you to follow the code of your state for the habeas. There's reasons for that. You know, and I'm not asking you to search the reason. Just make it quick for yourself. But here we're going to the District of Columbia Code. They're suing in California. The court comes back and says you couldn't sue in California. They said, yeah, but we're not getting any response from the Attorney General. This is a critical insight because this is most. This is also like a citizen suit. And if you don't understand this trick, and all these attorneys on these cases didn't understand this trick, they could have still filed in the in in that if they had standing. In this case, nobody had standing. Let me move it up to Trump. I think Trump will have standing. Whether he does this or not will show you whether or not this is a game. He has one last opportunity to pull this through. Whether he wins or not is not is irrelevant. I'm trying to show you there's things that are working right there. The courts respond to them and they explain things. Let me move on to what the court, the code of Columbia, District of Columbia says. Of the District of Columbia, not a state. A quo warranto may be issued from the United States District Court for the District of Columbia in the name of the United States against a person whom within the District of Columbia usurps, intrudes into, or unlawfully holds or exercises a franchise conferred by the United States or a public office of the United States, civil or military. The proceeding shall be deemed a civil action. And here's one of those things where they de- they throw a bunch of stuff under the term civil action, and it's all kinds of stuff, and this becomes, becomes confusing to some people, like when we're trying to say there's remedies, but they've been abolished. No, they stuck them all underneath these terms. They've redefined them. Anyway, get on to the point here. D.C. Code 163501, emphasis added, under 163502, only the Attorney General of the United States of the, or the United States Attorney for the District of Columbia can initiate a proceeding for issuance of a quo, a writ of quo warranto, quote, 
on his own motion or on the relation of a third party. This is ex rel territory like you would do a mandamus as well. You're proceeding in the na in relation to the government to produce to of a right you have to expose a problem. This statute goes uh, the statement goes on the case and if the writ is brought on behalf of a third par par person it may only issue by the by leave of the district court for the district of Columbia 163502 quote if the attorney general or the united states attorney refuses to institute a quo warranto proceeding on on the request of the person interested the interested person may apply to the court by certified petition for leave to have the writ issued 163503 and so here they have the pathway you can't do it straight up you have to go ask the district attorney there is the complaint was they weren't getting responses from this attorney this gen, this district the the attorney general well that's not an excuse because all you have to do is go find the time the statutory time when that time is perfected and you move right after that i would probably throw in a a good time a normal time depending on how i'm created the irreparable harm being done or the need and i would say tell i would put a notice to the attorney general saying you have to respond in seven days i got to move this thing on and if you don't i'm going to assume you agree and then i would wait and if they didn't i'd file my case i wouldn't file my motion for permission that's what leave is from that court and i would have an affidavit petition to support what i'm saying facts in evidence not your opinion not your belief first hand knowledge some of you that wrote paperwork you know you've wrote this stuff before maybe even combined them wrongly first hand knowledge is not the same as knowledge and belief a uh, a belief uh, so you have to be careful cuz equity looks at a distinction there and i've got and again this week i found more proof for all this right in the, right in the black and white so i'm really i'm more fortified to say if you didn't understand it then that's what you have to understand that the quo warranto is to can be done by a third party but you have to go through a process you send your letter to the, the attorney general whoever you're going to do back there the attorney and if they you give them a time unless they come back you move you ask for leave of the court the court now can entertain and give you permission to file that based on your affidavit of facts again the court the judge will look at whether or not you have the right standing and the cause to bring it now given to Trump I think he could he's going to have a couple things he has to say I believe but he can say them and that's the that's the point here there is a process that can still happen after the official the, the uh, someone takes the oath of office plaintiffs concede that the district of the district court of, of the district of columbia is the proper venue to issue the warrant the writ of quorento under dc code 3563503 but argue that their efforts to file there have been frustrated because the attorney general of the united states the attorney for the district of columbia have not responded to their requests now to tell you the truth i looked at that and said what's their problem it says right in the statute that they can move to do for leave it says it right there that's the black and white authority you don't make it up you just go print 1635503 and say here's my facts here's what we wanted to do that you make an affidavit with a letter that they the attorney general didn't answer or whoever the district you just the quote you quote the phrase out of the 1635502 this didn't happen we need remedy now and you see what the court says i don't know what more to say that's just how this works the district of columbia the district court in california properly dismissed plaintiffs quo warranto claims under 1635503 because the proper venue the proper place to file the complaint the proper place to file such claims against the president of the united states would be the district of columbia understand what they just said there you can whoever has standing can file against an official called the president of the united states he's not immune and under quo warrant quo warranto he's going to have to present the non-fraudulent right he has to the office otherwise he could be ousted and so this you know just thinking about this and what's going to happen if law works and we're moving this through and this is not the plan followed the plan like the plane the plane in fantasy island 
Trump was going to has the ability to move through a, a quo warranto. I'll be looking to see if they do that and how the court treats it. Why? Because I'm taking the temperature of the system still, even though with all the corruption. There's just certain things that the court is going to be too embarrassed to let go, uh, to allow to happen, or not. And you you need to keep the temperature, uh, take temperature of that, understand where that line is, and it's going to get so far removed from where it's supposed to be that it's going to be looking pretty bleak. But I think understanding that you can bring it back. That's the whole point about this whole thing. Uh, he, they go on to say here, we hold it except as otherwise specifically provided by the statute that there is no original jurisdiction in the federal district court to entertain an information in the nature of quo warranto. This is the federal court in, Cal in California has no original jurisdiction to entertain an information in the nature of quo warranto. What does that mean? It means that civil action, and your action is in the nature of a quo warranto, not the quo warranto any longer. This is that renaming of a of a of a procedure, a proceeding, an action, a remedy that you you used to have by its own terms is now been changed. It's there. But it's an action in the nature of a quo warranto. This is the you're looking right on top that this is like a surrogate authority. And I'm not I'll just mention quickly, notice they're saying United States District Court and not District Court of the United States either. And that may be a territorial court proper for that, but the point about the venue has to do with which court has authority over the officer in the district is this court named by Congress. You can't change that. The courts can't change that. So just follow the black and white, I guess is the point here. While D.C. Code 3501 and 3503 do not explicitly provide that quo warranto claims under them must be brought exclusively in the District, uh, district of Columbia, the plain language of the statute indicates that a writ based on the D.C. Code provisions must be sought within the District of Columbia because such a claim is challenging the right of the person within the District of Columbia to hold a public office of the United States. See Code 3501, quote, if quo warranto may be issued from the United States District Court for the District of Columbia against a person who within the District of Columbia, emphasis added, may, impor more importantly, 6502 and 6503, uh, 30, 60, 6, 163502, 16,3503, provide only for the District Court of the District of Columbia to grant leave of court to file the writ on the relation of a third party. Moreover, the United States District Court for the District of Columbia has now weighed in uh, with respect to the reach of the D.C. Code Quo Warranto provisions. Again, provisions, provisional government, look at that. Surrogate, they're going on. That's all my interjection. It states Obama, the quote for this, the state, the dist uh, this fact, or this uh, precedent, the District Court for the District of Columbia stated that, quote, a quo warranto action against a public official may be brought only by the Attorney General or the U.S. United States Attorney. And so, relative to those statutes, you have to go find the, it's just like you're doing your letters for the demand for evidence. Where's your, where's your authority to do this? Here's, we're going to do this suit. Can you do this for me? And if not, I'm going to do it based on this other statute as a, as an ex-rel without your permission. But I have to get the permission of the court leave because the court's going to, this is a very, see, here's, you have to understand, this is very important. You can't just be suing the office of president on anything. It has to be very definite and specific and right. And I can understand this check and balance right here at some level. But you ask permission. It sounds, oh, I got to ask permission. Yeah, yeah. It's like why the habeas has so many parts that are put in statute because no one could follow the rules, so they had to put them there. The plaintiffs go on this story. Plaintiffs do not pre predicate their quo warranto claim on any plausible legal basis other than the code. Thus, in this case, in this case, the district court did not err by dismissing plaintiffs' quo warranto claims as premised on the code. For improper venue. And they go on to more here in this case. So here's an interesting case. What I what triggered in my mind, I was thinking about this, what is, what, if, if, if anything's going to happen with Trump, if it's real that they have this information about the fraud 
and it's real what this guy, whatever, Lindell says. And that Trump's been given, for sure, given that information. Apparently he didn't have it before. He still has a remedy. And, I'd, and I'm just interested to see how this all plays out. He's the only one, I think, that would have the remedy. And he may have the proof of what? The fraud. And you saw the statute state that if there, well, the mandamus provision, the provision allows for uh, certain things to be questioned. And so here we have it. We don't need to go into, you know, whatever myth, myth fairy tales, the plan, whatever. There is a, anyone who's in his, his position has this as a remedy to look forward to and has the obligations just as he does. He would go to the attorney. He would explain it. I think he could give a... He's got smart, intelligent attorneys. They can shorten the time. I think it may be pressed out to 60 days, possibly. But even so, you maybe move to get that done, uh, shortened down in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a mandate, in a, man, in a mandamus, uh, to push forward his right to challenge the office taker from his office that he held based on fraud. I, I would I want to see that myself because of this problem I'm seeing that fraud is being allowed everywhere now in a way in a way like I predicted because of well because I say because of but when we saw that it was allowed to run your financial system through toxic debt being money fraud becoming money I told you the wraps are off I told you that a long time ago if you listen to me this long that very long you know I said that this is the point, is we're looking at that right now. So I gave you two links on this code. Uh, the persons against whom uh, issued civil action, they talk about these rules. You can see them for yourself. You know, I'm telling, showing you that the Trump could have a real remedy here coming out of the office to go after the office holder. That's up to him to do. Whether he can pull it all together, I don't even know. But it's there. So for people to say you got to go to guns or insurrection, Act, I don't know about all that. I see some better, more plausible things that are coming on that could happen. I'd like to see this stuff exercised, particularly as I said, fraud. I'd like. How are they going to address fraud? How are they going to? Are they going to address? Because everywhere else, I'm looking and finding the uh, fancy pants dance in the government, the officials, uh, whether they be the judges or whatever, even the attorneys, uh, just kind of blow by it all. They blow by it all when they send you your letter that they think that they're telling you they have something when they don't answer your question directly. That's fraud, and they know it. And so it's it's fraud is across across this whole country, and no one really has addressed it. And that's going to be part of how you address any uh, attack against you or any imposition under the color of authority. Like you have to get where a ma well, the mask one's kind of awkward, but you could still do it there, or the vaccine, or the having to not go someplace, or being ordered someplace. You can start throwing this into the mix and having a something in the way of them just having their way with you. COVID lockdowns may have no clear benefit versus other voluntary measures, international study says. Moving now into the lockdown, the prison that we're in, the republic that was stolen. Is Trump going to come back? Boy, what a, a cliffhanger we got going, don't we, folks? But it's your, for you, the lockdown is now known to be a quarantined, impos quarantined imposition that the government claims jurisdiction over you to do so is that fraud we've been talking about they now find the study now this is after the fact this is even after the the jurisdiction is given to them the mitigation measure is being found to be inv invalid it's being found to have no benefit and this becomes a, another another point of contention but see, my mind starts to go. There's like three or four different avenues now you have when you go here. But you're, to do this by itself, to argue there's no clear benefit, it still allows them the discretion to even apply the lack of benefit. Because they get to create, you get, without challenging the lack of jurisdiction to do so, they get to make stuff up. And the courts go with it. The courts, they make stuff up and the courts go with it because of that prerogative I keep telling you about that you have to defeat. COVID lockdowns may have no clear benefit. Just another story about the fact that what's happening isn't doing anything correct or having any benefit, meaning the measures are outside of their authority because they were to do only things that stopped the principal contagion or the contagious principle or the infectious agent. So, again, if you have this understanding, what I've been telling you, it's a short sentence to defend yourself against somebody's assertion. 
I wouldn't argue with people if they don't have a point. If they don't have an authority, just get out of my face and you know have respect for uh, the fact that if you go out a mask, you must be contaminating people. But at any rate, I'm talking about going into the uh, the authority, the authority, those that have an authority over property or business or something, and you have to do some contention. You you bring the facts of this type of thing forward and you assert a position. You're going to have the probably the only one in the room, as I see the world, the whole world being locked down being told you're in quarantine and no one says no I'm not and I don't let you I won't let you to continue that and those few that step out get beat down and everybody else allows it and those that stepped out didn't have the proper word in their mouth I don't care where you are in the world I, I watch the pictures all the time how come no one has a habeas in a, in a letter that says they don't do this they don't have the authority and the fraud and the and the lack of exit, demonstrable exigence why don't they just throw that in the cops face before they get beat the heck up why don't they demand to be taken before a judge so that they can work that out? And then you say, because I want to avoid you from getting any further felonious activity. And now you're doing them a favor, aren't you? But anyway, lockdowns are no clear benefit. More information. This is not even new. Now it's just more official. Okay? Matt Hancock says, highly likely Blittons will face annual COVID jabs. So, locking down no good. And then now, like I said, it's going to be ongoing, endless emerging diseases, endless treatment that isn't a treatment. And yet the news is out. Britons are highly likely, in quote, phrase, to need a COVID vaccine every year for the foreseeable future. If you thought this was going away, if you thought that, that oh, it's going to be, they're going to vaccinate and then it's done. No, this is a, now going to be the ongoing pressure. Matt Hancock has has said has warned today whoever this guy is I don't know and he has a uh, and he has uh, revealed two twenty thousand people a day are now receiving their first dose of the jab. Now I want to go back to the title. Did you hear the trick? Did you hear the trick? This is a COVID vaccine, not a COVID nineteen vaccine. So this is a common cold vaccine, which there cannot be no vaccine. Why they can make it endless? Because they'll never, ever catch up to a, a continuously changing target. They've already explained. This is why influenza. You don't hear about COVID-19 now. No, they want you to have the influenza vaccine, the thing they've been pushing all the time, underneath the color of this, on top of the other agenda. The health secretary said the UK could require a dual vaccination program with yearly jabs to protect against flu and coronavirus. What did I just say? Second paragraph tells you the truth. This is not about COVID. This is not about SARS-CoV-2. Even if it exists, it's not about that. This is about the common cold and the influ a season of flu that they have no authority under communicable disease law and authority to impose a thing. It's not novel. Even if we allowed government and business to make it up for us. The jab they call the influenza vaccine is not and not immunizing anyone because it can't. Against either. You're not even looking at SARS-CoV-2 here. Even if we say it exists, they're not looking at it. It's no longer relevant. Just as I told you last year. This was all a cover for what they wanted to do. And these injections are putting materials into your body, which we heard beginning of this broadcast, that have the ability, as we know, particular materials migrate to particular parts of the body, particularly in, in sensitive organs and or nerve system conduits to be congregated there that then can be stimulated by electromagnetic energy. It's exactly what I told you was the technology was saying was coming, and they were likely already doing it. And you see some of the effects, if we'll get here, the motor, uh, neural motor effects immediately happening within a couple of days, immediately starting to come in interfering, which I, I'm, I shouldn't say. Well, I'm wondering if that's not interfering with a, with a, um, a potassium channel somehow. And so you got to somehow have to get your stuff, get that removed from your body, but also add potassium to your diet. I don't know. Maybe some people that know more than I do on this, on this function, why? You're misfiring all of a sudden. It appeared that maybe potassium is being the potassium uh, uh, channels are being affected, so that the energy that the potassium provides from inside the cell is being interfered with in some way. But anyway, 
just trying to figure out how to help people. It's just sad to watch people get infected. And you say, but we, you know, we told you to look at the, the data sheet, and now you're now you're hurt. But even so, it's not you know, not shame on you. We got to help people despite themselves, I guess. But anyway, so it's against the flu and coronavirus. This is no longer a communicable disease. That is the fraud. They don't have also the authority. So here, right in the news, they're telling you, as I've told you for years, look in the news, your answer. They're telling you the answers. If you knew, how, if you have the eyes to see, if you have the magic decoder ring, and that can be developed pretty quickly. Dr. Fauci backs Biden's plan to administer 100 million vaccine doses. It's not bad enough for having harm. No, Biden's going to come in plan. He's to, I understand he's going to do dozens and dozens of uh, executive orders. I'm probably to undo what Trump did, and this is the big nasty back and forth of it all. Uh, but now he wants to say he can put out 100 million doses, and they couldn't even do. We're already having, having the re reports here. They can't even do what they planned. Infectious disease expert Dr. Uh, Fraudchi says the president-elect Biden's plan to dole out 100 million coronavirus doses in 100 days is doable, and a, a goal is quite feasible. Now, let me go back to that. I just told you these injections are for the common cold and influenza, the seasonable, seasonal flu, not CV-19, not uh, SARS-CoV-2. What did you read in the very first paragraph? Biden plans to dole out 100 million coronavirus doses. That's the common cold. And they're causing harm on the common cold. They don't have authority to cause anything on the common cold. It's not novel. It's not an infectious communicable disease. It's not in the list. Can you put those in short little bullet points for yourself? Please, folks, they have a paper put together. Biden unveiled an ambitious goal Thursday as part of his 1.9 trillion American rescue plan, which includes about 90, um, excuse me, 400 billion to tackle COVID-19. The fraud. Anyway, I'm going to re read more. It's on the books. They're going to come to press harder. Biden to deploy FEMA National Guard to set up COVID vaccine clinics across the United States. President -elect Joe Biden plans to use FEMA and the National Guard to build coronavirus vaccine clinics across the United States, according to the new details of the COVID-19 vaccination plan released by his transition team on Friday. The Biden administration will also quick start um, efforts to make the vaccine available to local pharmacies across the United States. I would stop reading the nonsense. It's consistent that they're only stopping the common cold, and they can't. They can't. They put it under the title of COVID-19, which is now the common cold and influenza, and that's not a communicable disease. Oh, yeah, it's communicable, but that's something they can't, it's just normal. They can't keep up with it. It mutates all the time. Now, we heard right here FEMA. Some of you who have been studying that, you say FEMA camps. Well, maybe telegraphing the future. Your mind to Germany, Germany to put COVID rule breakers in detention camp. Global plan, folks. A coalition of big tech companies including Microsoft, is developing a COVID passport. Not COVID-19, a coronavirus common cold passport. Here we have consistency across the reports, across the, the field that says you're going to get this so-called freedom certificate, this another fraud, the, the oxymoron of freedom certificate, the fraud of an immunity passport when none of these can make you immune at all. But big tech, Microsoft, the ones that leave you stuck with the hackable stuff, and then this guy who, Bill Gates, who started it, is supposedly an expert now in farming. He's an expert in medicine. He's an expert in Microsoft uh, operating system, which was has to be patched. It's a, a boat full of holes. has to be patched. It's never going to be fixed. But this guy's in the world affecting your life should be a at least an interest to you a little bit, that more big tech companies coming to make, what is it, the COVID, uh, COVID pass, I think that was, with the expectation that a digital document linked to vaccination status will be required to travel and get access to basic services. Now, I can't even say I predicted that. That was in the writings that they were coming with that. There's another conspiracy theory that's happening. The group is calling itself the Vaccination Credential Initiative, VCI, and includes Microsoft, Salesforce, and Oracle, three companies. The U.S. 
health provider Mayo Clinic is also involved in the project, which is described uh, being described as the most significant vaccination effort in the history of the United States. Vaccination for what? Vaccination for what? A fraud. All these do-gooders. And if you don't understand how to pull this together, this is what's coming on. And they just told you, if you don't have the mark, you ain't buying, selling, or doing anything. You're not traveling. Well, you're already not traveling. You've already agreed to that. So they can just put that on the list and know you're not going to challenge it. Now, it's, this whole thing started to got a quote in my mind. I don't, I'm not too good on the literary side so well, but things do come to my mind periodically. And this is a quote. A C.S. Lewis quote came to mind about this, these do-gooders and all this stuff that you're not stopping as they hum to harm you for profit, no less. Of all tyrannies, a tyranny sincerely exercised for the good of its victims may be the most oppressive. It would be better to live under robber barons than under omnipotent moral busybodies. The robber baron's cruelty may sometimes sleep, his cupidity may at some point be satiated, but those who torment us for an, our own good will torment us without end, for they do so with the approval of their own conscience. They may be more likely to go to heaven, yet at the same time likelier to make a hell on earth. This very kindness stings with intolerable insult. To be, quote, cured against one's own will, and cured of states which we may not regard as disease is to be put on a level of those who have not yet reached the age of reason or those who never will to be classed with infants, imbeciles, and domestic animals. It's mostly what came to mind when I read all this stuff here this week and what is going on with these do-gooders and these do-gooders come to harm you under the color, the fraud of doing good, and you let them. And this is again tied, you see, you won't do anything without the Kobe pad, the world pass, the whatever, the, the freedom certificate. In one regard, that's true. I don't know if people appreciate that. The freedom certificate, exactly, that's liberty. It's the range of motion within the frame of constraint, that's freedom, and the certificate that allows that motion written in a document, as opposed to you thinking freedom is free, which makes that an oxymoron. Then the immunity passport, totally a fraud, because they can't make any immunity unless they're declaring immortality, which maybe we can change it to that. This is the immortality passport, which is clearly what it's supposed to claim, but it's not. What is this all tied to? We're told this is a global fraud. I've been we've been talking about it for months and months, exposing it, showing from the documents, not our own fearing, fear mongering, nothing like that. No sensationalism, black and white, right there for us to see the execution happening. You know them when you see them going on. And I hear crickets, but here's what I wrote. I don't know quite a bit ago, imposing peace, on a Twitter, the hashtag imposing peace, back down in October, the NWO. Declaration of War, quote, there can be, this is, this is the, the Senator Bernie Sanders, a statement he made, quote, there can be no sustainable development without peace and no peace without sustainable development. Second sentence, contributing to shared prosperity and economic growth is essential for prosperity. This will only be possible if wealth is shared, is the discussion, the short statement about Agenda 2030, where he declared war on all y'all back in October 2018 that I told you, and we're seeing now the battle turning into their favor. The plan is the future we want, which didn't include you, just as I've been talking. Brought back out since 2018, Twitter, to show you that, that we're there now. They're imposing sustainable development. And they meet, it's a war, it a, was a declaration of war, and there will be no peace without Genghis Khan winning. I've said this over and over. I'm saying it, I'm repeating it from Twitter. 
this these do-gooders in the world the these the tyranny this this worst tyranny of of everything we can do is what we're facing and i hear very few people really doing what they need to do in order to stop it even for them more contagious covid strains is spreading to use it is the extension of endless emerging diseases is the sustainable developed sustainable disease why because there's a big system behind it that profits on top of it at your expense but this came in the news the more contagious covid-19 strain is spreading in use well they point out the very first thing the heading is coronavirus the mutated strain is being found in nearly 80% of the covid cases analyzed by Baylor College of Medicine well you think folks it's the common cold you think maybe a hundred, maybe that's the twenty percent that maybe something else that they still don't know because why they have no test. But wouldn't we think that there would be mutated strains, not just from COVID? They, that's by definition co- the common cold. Now, how they can see these mutated strains and not find SARS-CoV-2 is is maybe let's just not talk about that little detail. But researchers across the globe, global, are racing to learn whatever they can about COVID-19. In other words, they're acting without knowledge. At Los Alamos National Laboratory, National Defense, they've discovered a mutation of the virus. The virus facilitates its spread. No kidding. That's the common cold. That's seasonal influenza. The one we have in the United States spreads better that, than the original that originally emerged in, the chi- in China, says Jeff, Jeff Joseph Petrosny. Pros, I'll get, I forget the name. That's a problem, and it's not going to go away anytime soon. Fear-mongering. Now we have another one from China. Well, maybe the first one, was, the one we had wasn't from China. Maybe it was the common cold. Maybe they're exposing to you the fraud. Maybe this is just more fear-mongering, and I still say, where's the test? Because there is no test. But this is the promotion that they try to get you to believe that COVID-19 is alive, when in fact now, I saw, we've, we've seen it, I've told you about it, they brought both the common cold, coronavirus, and uh, seasonal influenza into the into one heading called COVID-19, and they're surprised it's mutating, and it only originates here. They already tell you they can't do a seasonal flu to Im- immunize unless they guess right, and even to so, only to some extent. How do they think they're going to do it with this so-called MR, uh, MR, mRNA stuff that's not even that's just supposed to be like NyQuil, except it kills you. I think you have to drink quite a bit of NyQuil for that to happen. So, the again, as MSM is saying, well, this is your freedom, sir. This is how you're going to be able. You can't, you can't, don't have liberty to move about the country no more unless you have this immunity pass. Some cardinal comes out. Facebook censors Mexican, well, so that that the MSM gets beat down a bit for bringing up the truth. Facebook censors Mexican cardinal for denouncing New World Order. It's not just the NWO. It's specific to using COVID as a fraud a fraud to overtake everybody. And this cardinal can't understand why you're all letting it. Facebook has censored, beat down what's free speech. They will tell you. Face, face Palm has censored a video of Cardinal Juan Sal- Sandoval Inig... I don't know why I can't get these names. I-N-I-G-U-E-Z. I don't know what's going on here. Anyway, Archbishop Emeritus of Guadalajara for suggesting that globalist leaders are exploiting the coronavirus pandemic to bring about a new world order. In place of the Cardinal's weekly video, Facebook Face Palm exhibited a grayed out screenshot emblazoned with the with the banner false information. Underneath Face Palm added, this publication repeats information about COVID nineteen that independent fact checkers deem false. Apparently they have the test, folks. Maybe we should inquire. See, we have so many people in this country that can focus in the heat of the thousand suns on these people, and I can't get someone to write it. Well, I got a couple of you to write the right letter just to prove that out, that they have nothing. And these fact checkers, maybe they have to have a, a, a head, head rectomony or something to get their head out of that dark spot because the fact checker is the fraud. The fact that there's a fact checker on this is a fraud. On its fa- on its uh, face palm page, Simonaro, Simonario, Arcad, oh boy, I don't know what it is. I really have a trouble today. I'm going to skip all the names. 
An information service run by the Archdiocese of Guadalajara posted the following screenshot on July, January 13th, along with the text, Cardinal Juan Sandoval denounced the imposition of a new world order hours later uh, has been censored. Now, this guy goes on, I won't, I'll stop here, we can read more and more and more. He goes on to explain that this is a cover. This COVID is a cover, just like you've heard behind the woodshed. I guess I'm the, I'm the same, I'm in the same position he is. And that's probably why I've never, I never got into Facebook and never had an inkling to because I could see this stuff coming that they're doing. That he exposes exactly what you've heard behind the woodshed, as I've shown you, is provable, notwithstanding the so-called fact checkers. That if you, that you, the one thing you, you, he's doing is to allow to bring this out. But you see, if you do it that way, you get slapped down and and stopped. You can't speak that way. You have to. You have to, your speech has to be censored. You have to self-censor to say the thing the way it needs to be said in the legalistic way, if I can use that without triggering a bunch of people. As I've been telling you before, you you line up the the crime that the dirt that's going on, the fraud, you explain it in a very short sentence, and you move on to the next problem for the other guy, the other side. You get out of someone fact-checking you. You assert the truth up front that can't be dis destroyed. Because if you don't, you may or may not eventually be forced into something that does this to people. And now the story is that I'm going to, I don't know how many more of these I'm going to do. I may stop. It's so important that you know this thing. these things are dangerous. It's not a joke uh, that I'm going to go through a string real quick here of people, of the effects of these this uh, global war on you, the declaration that was made on us through the weapon called COVID-19 and the the bioweapons that they're using in these inject, injection uh, injections that we saw DARPA uh, showing you that they can manipulate electromagnetically responsive nanoparticles to do things with you uh, that I've shown you and told you before. It was already happening in different uh, material makeups of injections through the last at least 10 years that go into your system, as I explained earlier. 55 Americans have died following COVID vaccination. Norway deaths rise to 29. You say, well, that's only 55 and 29. Folks, that could be you. But you're saying, oh, no, I'm not going to get it. That's going to be you when they force you because they caught you on the street and you're not going to get away and they don't listen to anything because you didn't listen behind the woodshed and didn't have a piece of paper, for as frivolous as that sounds, stick in their face. You're not going to be able to stick a gun in their face, that's for sure. You may do that once. Amid increasing calls for the suspension of the U.S. of the use of mRNA-based COVID vaccine vaccines produced by uh, such uh, companies such as Pfizer, especially among elderly people, the situation in Norway has escalated significantly, uh, as the Scandinavian nation has now registered a total of 29 deaths among people over the over the age of 75 who've had their first. COVID vaccination shot. We get down to the real point that shocked me a little bit. We get the, the numbers even bigger. Roll on down. It talks about everybody in the world getting hit and being killed in this age group. As I told you, they were targeting the age group. They're talking the people that were on the boomers that they have a liability to health care on. They get rid of that class. They, they put a, Someone's put a lot of money in all those trusts that they don't have to pay out that they haven't told you they've been doing all this time. Go down to the middle of this document, three-quarters of the way through, where I usually find some interesting, cool stuff. In addition to those deaths, people have reported 96 life-threatening events following COVID-19 vaccinations, as well as 24 permanent disabilities, 225 hospitalizations, and 1,388 emergency room visits. Do you want to be one of those people, folks? Do you want permanent disabilities? It's not death now. No, it's probably worse. And then they start; these things start to zombify you, and you watch the best the rest of the brain that does that they haven't touched. The one that they left behind is the one that you watch how you are becoming controlled and can't do anything about it, trapped in your own skin. You walk in with this thing, you're going to die, you're going to get permanently disabled, and you're at least going to go to the hospital. And you don't know what you have. And that's the immediacy of it. That's not talking to the intrusion of that injected material that's going to find its place in your body that may have its own effects in the body and the system and the, going after your immune system like we're told in the data sheets or may in the future be manipulated. Why do they want to harm you? 
because they get to make more profit if you've got any profit to take. Remember, some of this health care is going after your property when you can't pay. So we're watching a secret, right in your face, secret uh, transfer of property and theft to the government and or those that are also harming you. And this story goes on to talk about the Israelis, uh, 13 people experienced paralysis. Uh, that the, the doctor says, well, I'm not going to give the second shot after the first ones that got paralysis. She had no right to give it to anybody until they found out whether or not there would be. There would be a response. And they can't tell you, this can't be, this could not be known to be safe, even though they're claiming the lie. Like the government official, the DOJ, said that people were trying to assassinate the, the, the people in the, in the Congress and then had to back off. We have yet to see that the government forces these manufacturers to back off the claim that it's safe. No, they've created a structure that allows them to say it is safe, and yet you see the devastation. What's that? That's risk management, not reality. They're agreeable that some of you can get hurt, and that's okay. And that should concern every one of you, and I don't know if, why it doesn't, but they're going on. COVID outbreak in Auburn nursing home infects 137 residents, kills 24. I don't even know what else. I'm just going to read the headings. I mean, here, what, what else do I do? You're either interested to get together to see, look at, here's the point about all these. Look at each one and see what they say was the, was the effect. And then go back to those, those data sheets and say, yeah, those were all listed before they got going. They knew they were going to do this to people. To show you that when you were getting the information behind the woodshed, it was anticipation of what they were telling us. It's not even a prediction. It's just that they know it's there. We now know. And this is where people who are less aware or even bought into the that they're trusting, they're, they're still trusting, are being harmed. But look and see the correlation between what they knew was going to be the harm and what they're accepting. is the, That's acceptable. 24 dead in, the, in New York nursing home days after the jab. 33-year-old doctor. Here's the other thing. They were going right after the doctors, right? The first responders. They're coming down. We heard of a death last week. Another one. 33-year-old doctor with perfect health took the D Tdap, uh, Tdap vaccination. His nervous system is gone. 33-year-old. Laying on the bed with a oxygen bag over his mouth can't hardly breathe he's shaken like he looks like he has parkinson's but uh, ten times worse all from a vaccine focusing right in on the electrical system your nervous system 33 year old doctor is not going to be caring people and if you look at this as a war they take down a soldier it takes more of those people to care for that soldier that went down when you start looking at this way, you see this is, you know, someone, how they plan this out, it's really pretty, pretty genius. And we're not stopping any of it. No, no, we, they're preying on our trust and they're going to exploit it and we're going to let them. So Sonia Acevedo dies, Acevedo dies 48 hours after getting the Pfizer COVID vaccine. Health workers' sudden death has officials scrambling for answers. And most all of these, the government comes back, well, we didn't see Pfizer, we didn't see the government, we didn't see this as a possible problem when we did the test. And I told you, they won't see anything they didn't look at. They know it's there, though, because we knew that by the data sheet saying it would be there. What was one of the uh, adverse, serious adverse effects of the, of the Pfizer vaccine? Or, what was it, Moderna? Does it matter? But COVID-19 itself, first. Second, death. Are we not seeing that? Louisiana woman convulses, but the other autoimmune diseases was right next to that, right next to that. A Louisiana woman convulses uncontrollably after being injected with the experimental Pfizer COVID shot. Quote, I cannot stand to see my mom this way. It makes me want to cry, knowing I can't do anything to help her. Then you see a perfectly healthy woman now can barely walk, can barely stand, fighting her own nervous system in order to take her steps and that came to another video that was given before. I had tracked down the story, Louisiana woman, from a video on the brand uh, brand new tube that shows uh, more video of it. If you can stomach it, I, I don't like watching it, but I don't know what I want to see. I want to make sure what I'm looking at isn't, you know, somebody hyping up some things. There's some real damage going on, and I don't know what to tell you, but come here every week and just and throw this out and hope you can tell somebody else and we can stop that carnage while we hopefully also do some other things so it doesn't happen to us and maybe more actually turn this thing back around better to what we expected 
Matthew, a WER nurse who tested positive for coronavirus after getting Pfizer vaccine, deletes all social media accounts to avoid Tiffany Dover's situation. The nurse who was claimed to be dead, who they came out with a video that no one understands could be her. I don't even want to get behind that. We had problems. We have reactions. This is an example of someone who gets it, doesn't want to put up with the scrutiny, doesn't want to put up with what the MSM free freedom certificate bashing was all about. He deletes his account. You'll never hear from this guy now. Good, bad, or indifferent is another type of censorship. Upon a condition which I'm moving into here with these next these next couple tabs to say maybe this is actually a good thing relative to all that destruction and harm. Oregon governor vaccination plans have been scaled back. Why? She wants to blame the federal government and the Trump administration uh, and having to backtrack on the promise of more than 100,000 additional doses of COVID vaccine uh, from the Federal Reserve, which we're finding out didn't exist. I'm thinking this is a good thing. I'm thinking they're saving a lot of lives. Maybe that was the plan. Mississippi also makes the same complaint out of vaccine doses, says that all appointments officially booked until next month as they're having a supply problem. That said, <laughs> there's actually, there, Biden has what said that he can meet 100 million, 100 million doses, a third, a third of the population of the United States of America. Some of, you, some of us may escape. Some of us are going to escape, and I think it's going to be because some people listened, got behind the woodshed for themselves and showed the official miscreants they didn't have that jurisdiction, that all-important jurisdiction that they needed while they're harming, irreparably harming people under the color of a common cold, which was can't be a communicable disease, cannot. Influenza, seasonal flu, cannot be a communicable disease. Well, they can make a vaccine or so for it, but they can't make it communicable with that kind of power to lock you down. Now, somebody who I've criticized just a little bit because I, I'm not focused on mitigation, that doesn't stop the jurisdictional just attack the jurisdiction they don't have to impose masks. I think Peggy Hall, I think of is her name. I, I see I just see a tab. Peggy Hall, call my memory to this, documents, letters, and printouts defending your rights. If you can't do everything I've been asking you to do for yourself, that is attacking the jurisdiction. And all you can do, I'm trying to find fallback positions for you all if you can't find it for yourself. While I criticize Peggy Hall for not to fight the mask, but that fighting the mask doesn't stop the jurisdiction that would that would allow her to stop it all. She wouldn't have to speak to any of it. She has created, I think, created this the Healthy America website where she offers documents, letters, flyers, postcards, business cards, and printouts. I wanted you, those of you, to have the link. Go through it. Information's fair enough. I would say you need to study everything that's being presented as a placard or a printout or something you'd carry. In the interim, I'd really rather have you do some of the stuff I'm suggesting to stop the jurisdiction from believing it, it has authority, believing it's some kind of prerogative power. But in the case you have nothing more, there's some printouts that she offers. I'm looking at a couple of things. I see United States Civil Rights Act with Section 36, 2008. I don't know what the beginning of that, that title is, so I don't know what the section attached to. Search down and qualify the correctness of these things. But at least I want to offer these for you, if you have nowhere else and no other place to start, at least start looking at the things that she's been placing together. I'm not necessarily saying that this is the way I would go. What I'm saying is that there is subject matter in, in here, in this, that allows you to start on a basis of statement against even the mitigation levels. Now, I just looked up on the second page I'm looking through here as I go through the tabs. She cites a CFR, Title III Regulation 28 CFR. If that's 28 CFR, that's where you're going to go. That's on the second document at Section 36. That's rules. You have to understand that's rules implementing a law. Go find the, implement, the law that implements those rules. This is how you're going to find how you do this. You're going to backtrack through the federal side on this. And I thought you should find that interesting. And I don't like the civil rights parts of this coming from the federal side, but you'll realize that the state follows the federal. The state is not supposed to follow the federal, unless that's all in commerce. Now we might getting back to the brokers of Big Pharma. However, I don't want to get that far. I'm giving you some links. If you have no other thoughts on the mitigation parts of this, where they're imposing upon you, they've uh, she's offering documents, uh, things you can at least read. I said at least read and study that you can have for yourself in short form. 
because I think this is coming down. As I've told you before, people were using, what was that thing? They were saying that they were using the, the HIPAA or something act. I said, you can't use that act for what you're doing. People are wrongly using that. And it only takes a short time for the officials and people to be told, officials to be told you're using it wrongly and then deny you and then think you're a nut. You can't do that to yourself. And so I offer the Peggy Hall material, but I offer it in an unqualified manner to say start looking in these areas. If you have no other comment and you don't want to listen to the simple thing I'm telling you to do, like today, go to Texas, Javier's Law, go find that link that has the list of things you can do, drop those links, those lists into a document, fill in the blanks, and at least sign it and call it a habeas corpus and at least go that far. So in face of all these remedies you might be able to do encountering somebody trying to attack you, there's other things you can do in the meantime, and I have a link here, vitamin C and a study, an adjunctive therapy for respiratory infection, sepsis, and COVID-19. So you see there's a study for you privately to take power, get yourself into some, some uh, nutritional p protection before you have to deal with it. In fact, I've been re as we've been studying this, I've been looking and adjusting what I my supplementation and trying to re making sure that I'm combining things up a little bit more accurately so that I get the most benefit uh, from it. And just it's a normal thing anyway, so it's just making sure that I can do as I'm doing as much as I possibly can to avoid the criminals. Surgeon General Pick, new new UK COVID-19 strain does not appear to be deadlier. Deadlier than what? It's a fraud. The whole thing's a fraud. It's no deadlier than what? The flu? Yeah, okay, there we go. Now it's no deadlier than the flu. But we see good authority. Surgeon General decides it's not in UK it's not so much. And yet look at you're locked down under quarantine on something that's not deadlier than what? The common cold the bad flu. COVID-19 may be may have been around a lot longer than we thought. Here it goes. Here's their admitting. This also comes out of Oxford University, shedding a new light on the current coronavirus pandemic. No, it's not. It's shedding light on the common cold. It's been around with us forever. Why it's not actionable. Why it's not a communicable disease. Uh, and then uh, here, why is all this going on? I, wanna, I don't know if I got this link. I'll tell it to you. I'll give you the link to uh, fear-mongering, the beloved money, and being free from both. An interview with Dr. Annie Bukacek, a Montana doctor, I believe, who explains the money connection behind this to your local governments and why someone like Peggy Hall had to fight so hard in order to get them to recognize the ma mask limitations uh, and not having to wear them, but why you're having so much trouble. And what I told my uh, colleague way back in March when we started to deal with local counties uh, there, the county's interest was in keeping that money that they still hadn't gotten yet from the governor. But this doctor explains all that now this many months late, that that's the underlying drive, the money. Follow the money, why your governments are allowing the fraud. That's still a bribe, and that's still a fraud. Now, what can you do? Some people can do stuff, recall efforts against these. The California governor Newsom passes one million signatures. Folks, if you're a California listener, Find that petition. If it's, I don't know how, how recent it is. Get this guy out of there. It's one more thing you can do when you have nothing else to do or have done nothing else. It also gets you back meeting with people. And so there's things we get to do we have to do. There's things that we have to engage even if we didn't want to because we don't have any defenses against the type of onslaught that's happening. But if we do, we have not been exercising them. I've been asking you from behind the woodshed to... You get behind the woodshed with these with these miscreants, these killers, these psychopaths, these profiteers, government officials that will take bribes under the Color of Cares Act information. Stop it. you got to stop it because you're in. They told you today in the news yesterday, a couple of days, you're in quarantine and you're going to be there without your papers. Remember, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and all the help you give us and the place and the folks, the archive file is there if nowhere else. None of the, uh, all the people that are doing the the, main, the streams, thank you very much. The re-syndication, uh, appreciate it. Minds, bit, shoot, wherever you are, I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs are nature willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. 
Until next time, journey with purpose. Feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.